Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats uh, and this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with non-parametric statistics uh, is going to concentrate on what's known as the phi coefficient. Uh, up to this particular stage we've, we've, we've considered a number of different correlation, this is a correlation coefficient, okay, so we've seen, we've seen a number of different types of correlation coefficients uh, from the biserial to the point biserial, uh, the Spearman rank order correlation coefficient and so on. Uh, but this particular correlation coefficient, the phi coefficient, uh, is allows us to calculate the correlation between, so it allows us to calculate the correlation between two naturally dichotomous variables. So between two naturally, naturally dichotomous, dichotomous uh, variables, okay? Uh, the formula is actually, looks a little bit complicated, but it's actually quite, quite straightforward. It just contains uh, additions, subtractions, and multiplications, and divisions, and a square root. Uh, the formula uh, for the phi coefficient looks something like this. So the symbol is, is phi. It's equal to uh, BC, the product of BC, the frequencies in the cell B times the frequencies in the cell C, uh, minus AD, the frequencies in the cell A times the frequencies in the cell D, divided by the square root of the summations, I suppose, of the columns and and the rows within the tables. Uh, so for example, it's, it's A plus C times B plus D, this is a typical way it would be listed, uh, times A plus B times C plus D. And I have to show you the table. And actually, more importantly, it's actually the square root of that. So it's the square root of this particular, this particular, uh, this particular product of terms. Um, so what am I what am I talking about when I'm talking about A, B, C, and D? Well, we have two dichotomous variables. So let's say we have var one here, okay. Uh, and we have var2 here, the second variable, and they're dichotomous. Uh, so both variables have two levels of measurement, okay? So both variables have two levels of measurement. So what we're gonna end up with is we're gonna end up with a table that looks something like this. Uh, and we label this cell here. So this variable, don't forget, is dichotomous. So maybe this, this cell up here represents when the variable is one. And this, this, sorry, this row represents when the very var one, the variable one, uh, takes on a value of one. And this row represents when it takes on a value of zero. Uh, this column here represents for var two, represents when var two takes on a value, uh, let's say, of, of one and this when it takes on the value of zero. So we end up with four cells representing the pairwise possibilities uh, of levels associated with both of these dichotomous variables. And these particular cells uh, we're going to label, uh, we're going to label as A, B, C, and D. So we're gonna label this as A, this is B, this is C, and this here as D, okay? Uh, and what we have within these particular cells is the frequency of occurrence. So for example, we might have, we might have measured two variables. So we might have measured uh, two dichotomous variables, let's say dichotomous variables uh, across partic participants. Uh, and we might have something like this. Let's say we have, we have var one and we have var two. Don't forget the dichotomous. And for maybe for the first participant, we might have measured them as uh, having the condition in relation to var one and not having the condition in relation to var two. The second participant might have had the condition in relation to var one and also the condition in relation to var two. And we have all of these different possibilities. Uh, we might have one, one again, uh, we might have zero, zero. But what we basically have is we have these pairwise observations, okay? These pairwise observations across both variables. And what this table here, it's a contingency table. And what this table represents is A is going to represent within this, within this, uh, let's say, within this particular structure of the variables, it's going to represent how many times one, one occurs, okay? One on the first variable and one on the second variable. So what it is, is the frequency. And in this example here, you can see that one, one has occurred here and here. So in this case, A would be equal to two. Uh, and what about B? Well, B represents on the first variable one and on the second variable is zero. How many times has that occurred? And that's only occurred once right here. 
Uh, so that would be a one. Uh, and in this variable here, sorry, in this cell here, the frequency would be a zero on the first variable and a one on the second variable. Okay, so maybe in that particular case, it would be a zero, zero and a one. So that has only occurred once. And then finally, this is when both of them are zero and zero, zero. Actually, I probably really should have labeled these the other way around. Uh, I probably should have really labeled this here as a zero, as a zero and and a one in that case. It doesn't really matter because this is this particular this particular formula is is symmetrical. Okay. So let's just say for argument's sake that what we have is just to clear that up here. Okay. So let's just say for argument's sake, okay, that what we have is our table. We have when the x variable is one and the x variable is zero here. And let's say here we have when the y variable is zero and when the y variable is one. Just say for argument's sake, and let's call that A, B, C, and and D. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to calculate uh, this this phi coefficient. Uh, for a particular example. So